Hi everyone, welcome to Good Taste. I'm Tangie Patton. I hope you brought an appetite because as always, I'm going to take you to the best restaurants in San Antonio, Houston, Austin, and all parts in between. Sometimes the best spots are hidden, tucked away from the busy streets and bright lights. And that's certainly the case here where a young Cajun couple is recreating some amazing New Orleans food in their very own cookhouse. Let's head inside. Bourbon Street flavor is bubbling up inside the cookhouse in a little neighborhood just north of downtown San Antonio. <laughs> where the jazz is jumping, and so are the jumbo barbecue shrimp. Whoa! Yeah, it's a good show. Yeah. With show stoppers, like these butter-drenched charbroiled oysters. St they're still sizzling on the plate. I this love is like that. The, this is the Cajun fajita plate. <laughs> Comes yeah. out sizzling hot on the plate for you. Or this redfish with crispy cauliflower and shoestring potatoes. This catch of the day is right off the boat. Lots of Cajun favorites here that folks can't stop bragging about. The food is authentic. We've had the grilled, the char-grilled oysters that were outstanding. All from a young chef from the Big Easy who left home for art school. So your roots are New Orleans. New Orleans, yeah, definitely. You know, New Orleans has so many influences. I don't have any Cajun blood, you know, and that's the first thing people always ask is, are you that Cajun? That was the first thing I asked you. <laughs> This chef longed for those Cajun flavors from home. Ended up in culinary school in California, ultimately. And so from there, fell in love with it. And also fell for the love of his life. So how did you guys meet? Uh, we met in church, actually, in California. She was singing in the choir. And uh, I just laid eyes on her one day and said, I got to meet this girl. Was we, it love at first sight? It was. It was. Um... It was almost unbelievable and unrealistic, but just really awesome. And so we just found that we had a lot of things in common, and one of those things was food. I love to eat it, and he loved to cook it, so ah. it was perfect. They were married seven months later. Since then, a move to San Antonio and a rapidly growing family. Talk about a busy couple. How many kids do you have? We've got uh, four kids now. And they're Three ages? boys, they're five, three, two, and newborn, six months. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So we're busy. You're incredibly busy. The couple's first food venture together, a funky New Orleans themed food truck named Where Ya At. In, in San Antonio they say how you doing or what's up. Uh, in New Orleans we say where ya at. They say where ya at baby. <laughs> and so it. you know that's our greeting. It works well with the truck because we're always moving around. Worked so well that soon after, the cookhouse opened its doors. Hi there, how are y'all? Already, it's reservations only on the weekends. What are some of the dishes that you missed in New Orleans that you wanted to bring to San Antonio? Um, you know, one of my favorite dishes that we joked around, uh, me and some friends, before we opened the food truck and then definitely before the restaurant was New Orleans barbecue shrimp. So we played around with that idea and uh, that's kind of become our signature dish here. I always say that would be my last meal if I knew it was coming. <laughs> Barbecue shrimp's awesome because it's got so many different flavors. We do a bunch of different peppers. There's red pepper, uh, cayenne pepper, black pepper, white pepper, pepper flakes. Uh, and it's also got fresh garlic and Worcestershire sauce. Uh, we mix all that stuff wow. in with the butter ahead of time. So this is our, our barbecue butter. There's a few things I left out of that just because that's our little, our little secret. secret. Yeah. Barbecue so, butter. I barbecue butter. But the real secret, he says, is to keep the pan moving. Don't stir it with a spoon. We got some fresh bread coming out of the oven. Have you noticed since we moved to the kitchen, I'm, I'm getting more of that New Orleans accent. I can tell. <laughs> it happens when you get around those smells and that food. A little more barbecue butter, and these babies are ready to plate and taste. Just squeeze that little head and peel, right. and you got this big, beautiful piece of shrimp. You can give that a little dunk in that sauce. Yeah, and go for it. Mm. It's dripping and I don't care. It is so good. And if you leave a little mm. something on your shirt, that's just a reminder for later of the beautiful meal you had. What about all over your chin? Yeah, all that. 
So leave your diet at home for this one because you'll want to sop up some of that sauce too with plenty of fresh Gambino's French bread. The cookhouse is a true Cajun delight. One visit here and you'll be bragging about it too. Stick around because in just a bit, we're going to show you how to make that delicious barbecued shrimp, one of Cookhouse's most popular dishes. But coming up next, we're rounding up some of the best grub in the cowboy capital of the country and having a little fun with the locals. Oh man! <laughs> and then you can you can see they're black powder loaded. Oh yeah. Okay. Got any earplugs with you, buddy? Yeah. <laughs> Then we're headed uptown to roll sushi with one of Houston's top Japanese chefs. Some you eat, some you drink. Cheers. Cheers. Good things come from Cisco. Cowboy up guys, because you are in Bandera, Texas, cowboy capital of the world. Population, about a thousand. What they don't have in size, they make up for in fun. Ah, come see us in Bandera, Texas. It's the kind of town where cowboys are still king. The original trailhead for the Great Western Drive. And we're also the trick and roping capital of Texas. Wow. Yeah. And we're after a long day at the ranch. Hungry locals head over to 1856 Tavern for a cold drink and a hot meal. But you might be surprised at what's on the menu. Imported Norwegian salmon, served on a bed of sauteed spinach with rice pilaf. What do you want, Chef? Right here. Thank you very much. New York strip ready for table six. Prime steaks like this inch thick New York strip, dripping with parsley butter, partnered with an au gratin potato and tender asparagus. I feel a little dusty and dirty and roll in here and, and, and get a whiskey and then roll into some other things. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's some pretty good things on the menu. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Uh, very good, very good. Best in town, I think, actually. Don't worry if you've been riding the range. They've got a tavern burger, too. Sure to fill you up with fresh cut fries piled high. Plus, hot, cheesy, made from scratch pizza, loaded with fresh mozzarella and Italian sausage. And a smoky tri tip sandwich, smothered in melted provolone cheese that'll satisfy any hungry cowpoke. The owner, a fourth generation restaurateur who left the big city for a simpler country life. So you guys decided it was time to leave the hustle and bustle of Houston and head to the Texas Hills, right? That's exactly correct. We sure did. We um, found Bandera. My, my, actually, my mom and dad found it first, and we followed them out here. Decided it was a great place to raise our three boys. The name 1856 came from the year Bandera was founded. But the cuisine is something new. Here we decided to um, fill a niche that wasn't, wasn't here in Bandera. So here we um, have uh, a full bar, mm -hmm. which we don't in either, either of our other locations. You'll find unexpected flavors, starting with their amazing appetizers. We take um, beautiful asparagus, we parblanche them, fry them in um, a breadcrumb and top them with a jumbo lump crab meat and, uh, and garlic butter. It's fantastic. I'm going in with a fork on one side and a finger on the other. Is there that you all go. right? I like it. Okay, there's, there's a crab meat. Anything with crab. Mm. Oh, man. I can make a meal out of that. No a lot of people do. Isn't it awesome? I'm going to get a bite, too. That is fantastic. Mmm. <laughs> crab cakes up, table four. And killer crab cakes, too, served with the romalade sauce over a bed of fresh greens. It's all crab, it looks it like. Is, there's no breading in here. This is all crab. Mmm. Nice job. Mm. It's really good. And cowboys, we didn't forget about you. Here's a hearty hash you're gonna love. We take a tri-tip, um, an akahushi, I should say. You, we, akahushi, yeah, we, one of my favorites. We take yeah. an akahushi uh, tri-tip, we take it to our barbecue restaurant at SIDS and smoke it for about three hours. We use that tri-tip 
with a, a diced potato, onions, bell peppers, and, a, and an awesome sauce, and then top it with um, a sunny side up or a fried egg. Oh, it's wow. to die for. Tell me, what's it been like, the difference living in Bandera, the cowboy capital of the world, compared to the big city? The biggest difference is the um, hustle and bustle. Yeah. It's a little, you got you to slow down a little bit. You got to make sure you look at everybody in the eye and say hi, because you know everybody, which yes. is awesome. So whether you're a cowboy all the time, oh man, or just for the day, there's always a delicious meal waiting for you in the cowboy capital of the world. Don't forget your boots when you go to Bandera. Okay, time to find out how to make that delicious Cajun barbecue shrimp that the cookhouse is famous for. And I'm with my expert, Chef Belinda, at HEB Cooking Connection, where we find all kinds of great delicious things. Quick and easy, we can do at home. That's right, Tanti. Quick and easy is the way to make the compound butter that's famous at the cookhouse. And that's the key to this dish. Yes. Okay. Is the butter. The other key is you're going to use shrimp that have their head on them because there's a lot of nice fat and flavor in the head. Okay. And you take the shells when you peel the shrimp, you're going to toast them really nicely, put them in your mocajete or food processor and pulverize them. Then you're going to take two sticks of butter that are room temperature and soft. Whip them up with your mixer, and then we're going to add in one jar of the Cookwell & Company barbecue shrimp mix. Quick, easy. And the flavor in this is unbelievable. Okay, let's do it. All right. Okay, go ahead. You're on your hot skillet. Put in your compound butter. Let that get nice and hot. Then we're going to go ahead and add in the shrimp and a little more garlic. Okay? The compound butter, again, that's the key to all the flavor in here. Toss it around a little bit. Then you're gonna go ahead and pour in some amber beer. Let this cook off and reduce. You can smell that great. The amber beer adds a lot of malty richness and caramel taste to this to give it that classic New Orleans taste of love. You're gonna rotate, and the key to this is moving the pan around. You do not want to let the sauce sit also, go ahead and get some lemon juice for a little bit of acid. You can go ahead and put your lemon in there. It's going to give a nice brightness of flavor. And then to finish this off, you're going to go ahead and turn off your flame and add in some more of the compound butter and let this melt in and swirl around. This is your cookhouse at home version of barbecued shrimp. Wow, you nailed it. As always, that is awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Coming up next, this is good. How about the perfect Pinot Noir to go with that dish? My wine finds are coming up. But first, it's sushi, sashimi, and so much more. I always say that's like a Japanese style pico de gallo. Meet the spirited brother and sister behind one of Houston's finest Asian bistros. Keep your seat at the table. Good taste will be right back. Good Taste with Tangi is brought to you in part by H-E-B. You're looking at what lots of locals say is the best Chilean sea bass in Houston. I'm inclined to agree. And that's just one of the reasons I wanted to bring you to the table at Sage 400. All of the rolls are very unique, a lot of unique rolls you don't find anywhere else. The perfectly roasted sea bass is a silky, melt-in-your-mouth indulgence. Get it as an entree or as an appetizer like this. These are lettuce wraps taken to new heights. The sushi rolls are beautiful, and the sashimi is some of the freshest you'll find anywhere. But it's not just about the top shelf seafood. The pork belly confit, miso cured with a sunny side quail egg on top, is delicious. And the foie gras served nigiri style is quite a treat. Not a sushi fan? No worries. You're not left out on this menu. Check out that rack of lamb. Every little thing matters and I'm here all the time. If I'm not here, my brother is here, so there's always someone here. We just run this restaurant with our heart. Angie Wang and her brother Teddy are the owners at Sage 400, a small, stylish spot tucked into a strip center on Sage Road near the Galleria. Angie runs the front of the house, 
and her brother is the chef. Both of her kids help out as well. Customers have been coming here for years for the fantastic food and very personalized service. So we actually have the cell phone of uh, Angie. We text her our order. We normally order the same thing, so it's easy. <laughs> we, all, we have a preferred text. <laughs> the pair is not only attentive to their diners, they're also passionate about their food. And they often joke about the contentious give and take required to arrive at the perfect dish. Oh, we fight all the time. <laughs> That's what family about, you know, because she is a very good PR person, but I'm a chef. So we have a different view. So who gets the final say? If there's a, if you all come up with a fun dish and you have one opinion and he has the other, who wins? I think he let, he let me get, get the final say. Yes, he yeah, he does, yeah. Nice but we will fight. There will be, a, you know, there will be a fight. At the end, we are blood, you know. We love each other. We, we just want to do the best that what we can. That passion. Their behind-the-scenes attention to every little detail is just one of the reasons Sage 400 is celebrating 11 years at the top of its game in one of the most competitive locations in town. I really love our tuna tartar. I always say that's like a Japanese-style pico de gallo, and it's served <laughs> with like wonton chip. If you've never tried sushi, this is a great place to dive right in. Sushi could be cooked, could be uncooked. Sashimi just means that most of the time we say sashimi is just a fish alone, but it could be cooked too. Then there's nigiri, a carefully sliced piece of fish simply placed on a tapered bed of vinegared rice. Too tight, it's not going to taste good. Too loose, it's going to fall off. And maki, more commonly known as a sushi roll. Colorful combinations of fish and other delicate ingredients all skillfully layered and rolled and rolled together. This talented sushi chef trained for 10 years with influential Japanese chefs before becoming a full-fledged sushi chef. His knife skills are incredible. That sashimi is sliced razor thin. The precision with which he creates these dishes is a beautiful sight to behold. For the more experienced, ardent sushi fan, Sage 400 offers uni, the edible part of a raw sea urchin, also said to be an aphrodisiac. It's not for the beginner. The chef insisted we try a sort of sake sea urchin martini, known as the uni shooter. A beautiful drink, quail egg and all, but something reserved for the most adventurous of palates. So wow. how do you drink this? Do you sip it? Just bottoms up. Oh man, really? Yes. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. I left the best part behind. Yes, you did. Oh, man. That's your, that, mm. that just shows you need to practice more. I know. I'm going to have to come more often, right? That's right. <laughs> wow. I'll be back, all right, to try even more of the creative dishes on this menu. This pair's passion for the perfect dish is contagious. Time now for my Wine Finds of the Week. And if you're a regular viewer of our show, you know I love Pinot Noirs. And I have a general rule of thumb, and that is I usually spend a little bit more per bottle when buying Pinots. Well, I'm gonna break that rule today because I found some incredible wines. A little background, HEB is the biggest retailer of wines in the state. They're able to source wines from all over the world that others can't, so you're going to find wines here you won't find anywhere else. These Pinots are great examples, incredible values. Let's start with one, and I love the name of this wine, Simple Life. For example, if you like the A to Z Pinot for about $16 a bottle, try this. Simple Life Pinot Noir. This is a $10 bottle of Pinot. California Pinot, bright with flavors of bean cherries and strawberries. A smooth little wine and one heck of a buy. Simple Life. Okay, Mayomi fans. I've got another wine for you to try as well. You know Mayomi well at about $20 a bottle. Well, check out the Four Star Pinot. It too is a fuller bodied style, very similar in taste, and its price is about $18 a bottle. So fans of the lovely Flowers Pinot Noir, you probably buy this wine for special occasions and that's because of its price of about $46 a bottle. Well, if you like flowers, check out this. The Mouton Rouge OPP 
Other People's Pinot. Love the label on this. This is a wonderful wine from the Willamette Valley in Oregon. So you get the bright cherries, a little bit of earthiness, and then a really nice spice on the finish. I love this wine. I think it's a great bargain. This one's $24 a bottle. So there you go. Some fun Pinot Noirs, and I found them at HEB. Who doesn't love a good Pinot? When we come back, find out how you could win a relaxing weekend at the beautiful Houstonian Hotel. The Houstonian is a fantastic summer getaway. Here's how you could win. Head to Good Taste TV right now and sign up for a chance to win a luxurious weekend at the Houstonian, complete with spa treatments for you and a guest at the beautiful award-winning Trellis Spa. Don't forget to set your DVRs for next week's show. Thanks so much for joining us and cheers to good taste.